la segunda jornada del foro global socioambiental. So to complete this forum, and this second day, we're going to begin with this uh, third panel, which is titled Central America and Colombia from the Communities, Corporations, Common Goods, and the Anti-Capitalist Program. We have three speakers, Ligia Arriaga, she's an activist, an advocate for human rights and in the environment. Then Francisca Chica Ramirez, she leads the movement, the peace movement and also anti canal And Fernando Benjumea, he's a teacher of the National University of Medellin, Colombia. So Francisca is having some difficulties with um, connection. She's in a peace and settlement in the frontier between Costa Rica and Nicaragua. So she's having some difficulties. Um, so we are not sure if she will be able to connect in the following hour and a half. So that's, that's why she's not here with us right now. And once again, for those who uh, are unaware or are um, joining us right now, there is an interpretation function in this um, Zoom meeting. You can click on the planet symbol and choose which language you want to hear the forum in. And remember that German is actually Arabic. Okay, perfect. So let's begin this panel. First of all, Ligia, are you there? Yes, sure. I'm just waiting, I'm ready. Okay, so I'm going to share then my screen. Okay, you can just tell me and I will be showing all the images. Hello, greetings to organizing and fellow advocates of human rights and the environment in any corner of the planet where they are and they receive us. The title of my exposition is Let's Say the Matsu Sagarati Wetland, the largest freshwater reserve in Panama. It is also the largest province of Panama. That's the largest reserve of forest and diversity of life. It also has the Darien National Park with 5,790 kilometers, uh, square kilometers, one of the largest in Central America. Please, next slide. Thank you. It is worth mentioning that Darien has eight protected areas, but contrary to what its category says, most of them are severely affected because their limits have not been respected due to the intrusion of cattle ranchers and the lack of enforcement of laws by the authorities. Since 14 years ago, the negotiation with Matsu Sagarati Wetland Lagoon has begun with 56,250 hectares the largest and most extensive biodiverse freshwater reserve. Also a resting place for migratory birds. It's a nesting place for waterfowl, fish spawning place, and it is rich in all kinds of seafood. In addition, the Matsu Sagarati wetland is interconnected with the Gulf of San Miguel in the Pacific Ocean. Next slide, please. Since 2002, I have been based in Darien, working as a journalist and correspondent for national radio and television stations. In the news coverage, I could not abstract myself from the subject of human rights and the environment, because the activities that are developed are directly linked to soil, forests, rivers, and sea. Most of the activities in Darien are cattle ranching, agriculture, logging of forests to market their timber, 
as well as bird watching, hiking tourism on a smaller scale. This profile in the information identified me as a defender of the rights of patients and the environment. In the years 2006 and 2007, the comment circulated loudly through the streets of the city of Petedi that the Matusagarati Lagoon was being delimited and that many farmers were lending their names, giving a copy of their identity card to people allied to the mayor of the district of Pinogana. Falsely arguing that they lived there and that they had possessory rights. That mayor, in turn, sold these lands that were underwater to some Colombians who paid a lot of money for them. Dinero, pero al alcalde. La gente frecuentemente comentaba lo que estaba ocurriendo con People el mar. Often, often commented uh, on what was happening to the Matusagarati wetland lake. But no one wanted to denounce it loudly or let it be known who was denouncing it. As a journalist, I had the to get testimonies to give strength to the report, but no one wanted to do it. They were afraid. Next slide, please. One day, a local acquaintance told me, Ligia, if you don't denounce the trafficking of land in the lagoon, then you cannot say that you defend the environment. That phrase rang in my mind and I decided to file a complaint at the environmental office attached to the prosecutor's office of La Palma, capital of Darien. More than a year has passed because it was in 2007 and the Matusagarati wetland deal had not been stopped. Then we decided with a friend to gather people we knew with some level of sensitivity for the environment and that is how, in 2009, we formed the Alianza por un Mejor Darien, an Alliance for a Better Darien organization, which has been operating since that time, leading complaints to the judicial authorities, the environment, the water resource authorities, land, land titling authority, and also the Anti-Corruption Commission and others. Next slide, please. Thank you. Once we were formed in 2009 as the Environmental Defense Group, we raised a flag in the sense of the Matusagarati wetland. We organized a tour to the site in question because the people denounced that the Colombian buyers of the lagoon lands were entering heavy equipment and were destroying the vegetation and flood forests, making large trails. Next image, please. Our organization invited the authorities involved in the protection of the environment, aquatic resources, land titling, in which also participated representatives of the company Arrocera Agricultura y Servicios Panama S.A. Agriculture and Rice uh, Service Company. So the Colombian buyers of the land of the Matusagarati wetlands. In 2009, they had not even presented an environmental impact study, but they were already causing damage to the wetland. The authorities arrived at the mangrove and verified what was being done in the ecosystem but never made a report on the findings at the site. After a few months, it was year 2009, she was replaced by another one who approved an environmental impact study, which indicated the construction of irrigation canals, but it, actually they were for drainage to empty the wetland and be able to plant 2,007 hectares of rice. Once the part that would be cultivated was drained, they built a water reservoir for use at will for their crop. And at the same time, they carried out aerial fumigations with lethal chemicals. All of those actions caused great mortality of aquatic species. 
According to testimonies from local residents, thousands of fish floated like black white clouds that, that covered a large part of the Tuira River's flow. In addition, the workers killed every wild animal they found among the rice fields, cro crocodiles, anteaters, boas, turtles, ducks, niggas, bears, jaguars, etc. Because they had already destroyed the biological corridor that connects the mountainous area, that is a reserve, Filo del Tallo, with the wetlands, where a variety of animal species feed, drink water, and rest. Next slide, please. Thank you. Another serious mistake in the environmental impact study is that they fail to mention that this area is a wetland. The wetland cannot be sold or concessioned, much less for monocultures that involve the use of agrochemicals. The study also fails to mention that this site is a biological corridor for the jaguar, an endangered species and a protected species in Panama. Also, there is a, a diverse amount of birds who feed in that place, also protected species. The drying of the wetland coupled with fumigations has caused great mortality of aquatic species and wildlife typical of wetlands. In addition to rice monoculture, they also began to plant oil palm without any environmental impact study. Our struggle to defend and save the Matu Sagarati wetland lagoon has not faltered. In view of the fact that the Darien authorities chose to be in cahoots with the land traffickers and land buyers of the wetland who had formed the company of Panama Services and Agriculture, we appeal to the authorities of higher bodies in Panama. We, record, we requested courtesies to the Legislative Assembly, the authorities of the Judiciary, and the Supreme Court of Justice, with the support and alliance of the Rector and Vice-Rector of the University of Darien to give them first-hand information and ask them to act by executing the laws that already exist. The complaint I filed in 2006 and seven was filed for six long years and finally the prosecutor responsible for the investigation argued that being a misdemeanor he sent it to a misdemeanor jurisdiction and dismissed it they laid that this led us to file a new complaint now as a m e d a r organization before the environmental advocacy center where we assign a lawyer presented the complaint about the serious damage to the wetland before the second criminal court. Um, after investigations were carried out, they sanctioned the rice monoculture businessmen to only 32 months in jail and one year of disqualification to exercise public functions. Lija, sorry, I apologize for the interruption. Would you please speak a little bit slower for the translators? Yes, sure, no problem. I was saying that we had made a complaint when we were an organization uh, known as AMEDAR. That was in the city of Panama. They only sanction the rice monoculture businessmen with 32 months in jail and one year of disqualification to exercise public function. There's no comparison between the sanction and the damage caused to one of the most valuable ecosystem of Panama, which is considered also the largest reserve of fresh water The Matusagarati Lake is uh, fresh water. 
it is key in the mitigation of global warming and global climate change, as well as fundamental for food security. Despite all the struggle that we have summarized, no government has enforced the law, the law of the Constitution of Panama, which in its article 258 says that the wetlands are not for sale or purchase. Three governments have passed and the current one has already been in office for two years and neither has the drainage that annihilates the wetland has been stopped, nor has the illegal titling of the Matu Sagarati wetland has been investigated. For, for more than five years, the fishermen have suffered a drastic decrease in artisanal fishing due to aerial spraying with agrochemicals that are lethal to the wetlands aquatic life, a reproduction site for fish that later go out to the Gulf of San Miguel and are the target of artisanal fishing. The constant use of agrochemicals kills eggs and fry because they, of their small size. Fry the population that does not see them with and only their eyes, that they notice the significant decrease in fish and shellfish. Now, I apologize for having to refer to this on a personal level. Uh, next slide, please. One moment. As a spokesperson in this struggle to defend and try to send the wetland, I received insistent threats. In 2009, those involved in the negotiation of the Matsugarativa lands hired hitmen to kill me and for me to disappear. One of the hitmen repentant warned a priest what politicians of the province had planned along with traffickers and buyers of the land in the Matsugarati wetland. Thanks to that repentance and the quick intervention of the priest to hide me, I can tell you today about this case. Part of the history of this Matsugarati defendants. I filed complaints about this case with the prosecutor office of Darien not only there was no investigation carried out, but they even lost my complaint. Subsequently, I received two more threats in the following years due to my activism in defense of the wetland. So I had to leave the country in 2016, supported by the Irish organization Frontline Defender, whom I thank, because I do not know what would have happened without their help. That was the year they assassinated our colleague, Berta Cáceres. For more than two years, I have defended the Matsusagarati wetland in different European forums. As a result of this battle, the conflict appears in the world at last of environmental conflicts, with Joan Martínez Salier as its promoter and world referent of political ecology. Subsequently, I returned to Panama in 2018, finding myself with the cooling off spirits of some members of the AMEDAR. The defense, oh, you can, uh, next slide, please. The defense of Matu Sagarati had suffered a downturn, probably due to the seriousness of the threats against me. So it has been necessary to restructure the organization. Based on AMIDAR requests and activity already in 2015, we managed to get the social environmental study carried out in depth. Again, in 2019, through SENACIT funding, the research project on hydrology, vegetation, and bird fauna of the Matusagarati wetland complex was carried out. Among the results, and you can go to the next slide. 
among the results, we have nine different types of vegetation. For the first time, extensive array forests were mapped in the Pacific of Panama, a species considered its great potential as a carbon reserve, which makes it relevant for the fight against climate change. This study presents two new plants for Panama and work is being done on three possible way reports. The philodendron darwinians, a species recently described for science, was recorded. What are the letters? Pistia stratiotes and Philanthus flutians. This is a new report from Panama. En el tema de aves, se observaron 259 especies de aves, 40%. Regarding birds, two, 259 bird species were observed, 40% of the Darien species, of which seven are Darien specialties, 64 are threatened, and 35 of them are long-distance migrants. That's the harp eagle. It is an amazing species and it is protected by Panama. And in this wetland, she also makes um, her way and she feeds and that is interrupted by the rice plantation. During this time, it has been possible to carry out approaches to have scientific arguments and demand its comprehensive protection. Starting with the closure of the canals that drain it since early 2009. In the social environmental study of 2015, as well as the project carried out in 2020, they conclude saying that the wetland Matusagarati Lagoon has all the characteristics to be declared a Ramansan site of international interest. In 2021, after all the documents and citizen consultation were presented for the wetland, Matusagarati Lagoon to be declared Ramson site, a group of cattle ranchers encouraged by the four former major one of the main land traffickers of the wetland met with the president Lauretino Cortizo and asked him not to present a proposal for the Ramsar side declaration. President Cortizo, himself a cattle rancher, readily agreed. The destruction of the Matusagarati wetland prevents its ecosystem, which is fundamental in the mitigation of global warming, from performing its functions efficiently. It affects the country's food security in the production of fish and shellfish, harming hundreds of artisanal fishermen and the subsistence of dozens of populations that we have that live from living activities. This is why in this global forum, I suggest that we form a great alliance to mobilize and demand compliance with laws in defense of life. That governments commit themselves to mitigate climate change. Fresh water and salt water are the most effective way to fix carbon on land. The destruction of rice the destruction of them, the wetlands, by rice, oil palm, or shrimp globally, hormonal cultures, is a crime for countries and for all humanity. As civil society organizations, let us take allied actions globally to fight this systematic and merciless destruction of nature that links to the corruption, impoverishes more and more our countries rich in natural resources. We are having this systematic um, discussion regarding corruption and regarding how much it impoverishes 
our countries, which are already rich. So as we have said before in many other interventions, we do need to think about this movement from the upside down. And that is why we have to make many activities regarding education, especially for a social environmental perspective. Stop the burning of wetlands. Let's defend the ecology of the poor people. Thank you so much and thank you for this great invitation. Gracias, Ligia. Eh, ok, Ligia, thank you. Antes de pasar al, al siguiente panelista, eh, Before we go to the next panelist, we are having some connection issues Costa Rica, with Costa Rica and Nicaragua. Eh, In our frontier, it is the zone, the frontier zone, which the settlement led by the peace movement and feminist peace movement controls and simply we would like to say that she's the referent of a very important movement year 2002 12 2013 14 um, she confronted a conflict with the ortega dictatorship and chinese imperialist Uh, to make something like the canal, but not exactly it, and going through the bottom of a bridge, trying to also leave a message, right? And the resistance of the peace movement was able to avoid that project from happening. I'm sure that later we are going to send um, articles and interviews that we have with Doña Chica Ramirez, which is such an important figure and also part of this co coordination from our socialist international socialist league. Uh, we have talked about for the um, commission of the liberation of political imprisoned people in Nicaragua. Okay, we will now continue with Fernando, who is a teacher of the National University in Medellin, Colombia. This exposition maybe does not have to, has to do with uh, the university, but with a more general perspective. Fernando, you're there? I'm here. Okay, perfect. We will allow you. Fíjate si puedes con compartir pantalla. Ya estás habilitado para hacerlo. Okay, now try to share your screen. You are now authorized to do so. Ahí estamos, ¿cierto? Ahí estamos, sí. That is. Uh, that's, that's fine. Perfect. Eh, buenas tardes. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for this invitation. Um, I will talk in general terms. It has nothing to do with Colombia. It's an observation about what capitalism is doing with this planet. So I will ask you for a little bit of patience in that, in that sense, sense. So the social and the climate crisis are a result of this um, capitalist crisis. Capitalism is responsible for destroying nature and producing global warming. I'm going to change the slide. 
Okay, perfect. There are two realities that cannot be taken away from the other. They are unified in which one of them increases the other one at a global level. We are mistaken if we think that global warming is the main issue we have to solve since we don't solve the destruction of natural ecosystems, we won't be able to solve global warming. Capitalism is, has a duality. On the one hand, it has created a technological and social glory of our generation, creating great welfare opportunities and enjoyment for uh, societies uh, in an unequal way, of course, and on the other hand, it is responsible of the crisis, uh, of the consequences of the environmental crisis. Those who have conquered the highest points of progress are now uh, destroying the social issues and it's putting human existence in question. It is a con contradiction that has to be understood so that we are not, uh, we don't fall into, a abyss, into the abyss. It is a contradiction that is originated in the fact that capitalism is a global system sustained in private property of the forces of production that has put in the hand of uh, millions of companies the future of economy. There are companies that um, make market products to be sold at markets. So the purpose of all of those million companies is to get profits as much as they can. But in order to produce those profits, they have to compete one against the other in a market that's quite limited. And they have to make these products prices cheaper or get their quality and functionality better in haste. They try to make the production uh, processes more efficient to enhance work production. But those companies are getting less profits and that they can only get them to rise by um, also raising the amount of products that they offer. They need more development of productive forces. They need to produ produce uh, even more products, more infrastructure, more media, more cities. It is a process that's possible partially. It is a cycle of producing just, just because the unlimited production of market product, unlimited profitability. This is the source of all of our disasters, all selfish efforts that those million companies make to get more capital when they get together, it results in a great pressure against nature to extract more and more raw material, energetic resources, food, and imposing more infrastructure with the purpose of getting profitability, then there's no space for environmental protection because they need to get uh, cheaper products. And that has been done for 200, 200 years since companies need to make their own decisions, it is an anarchic um, aspect. They have decentralized everything so that companies can keep on developing, but it is unequal. So it's anarchic and unequal. So there's this tendency of this super production and exploitation of workers and nature, and it is unnecessary. The origin of environmental crisis is in this contradictory elements of how capitalism uses productive forces to get profitability and 
they use and loot and destroy. For states, different governments, it is good news because it means um, more investment, more profit. But that does not boost um, economic growth. If there's any doubt that capitalism is responsible of global warming and climate crisis, let's see the facts. Capitalist uh, companies that exploit mining and energetic resources, deforest and the contaminate the atmosphere, underground waters, they destroy the planet in sometimes irreversible manners. Those companies are big companies, medium-sized companies, small-sized companies, some of them are illegal. And you can find them in any corner of the planet producing unequally and a great amount of raw materials for a lot of capitalist companies. Those uh, companies who exploit agriculture and cutler they are the most destructive ones because of these uh, methods of production. They are quick and efficient and they confront the rhythm of nature, which are more slow and diverse. And monoculture uh, kills the, the natural properties of soil. They are responsible of 70% of the consumption of water in the world. Even 80% of deforestation is um, a result from those methods of production. They result in the extinction of animals and the contamination and pollution of water and air but they sustain the food industry and other products but which are essential for humanity. And it's unequal and sometimes irrational. There are more than 800 million, 800 million people who um, are going through famine and hunger. And there are millions of people who are going through overweight or overeating. It is evident that we cannot rescind from agriculture and cutlery. But it's also evident that the forms of capitalist exploitation are leading to destructions and levels that are not necessary, and they keep on growing. So there's an excess of carbon dioxide and they're destroying diversity. For example, mindless uh, sea fishing because of their methods, their fishing methods, the use of equipment in soil, the use of equipment in the sea, they damage aquatic species. And Nature cannot uh, work at the same speed that they destroy it. Tropical forests are our shield against greenhouse gases, and they are being destroyed by industries for agriculture, for the use of timber, mining and to ensure urban growth and infrastructure. They are also destructed by forest fires, which are um, also great producers of carbon monoxide, killing all the species that depend on them. They destroyed bird species, insects. They are altered, the microclimates, biodiversity, and soil fertility is also destroyed. 
Nature is unable to recover all that has been destroyed. Deforestation facilitates uh, floods and deterioration of, of the soil. And they also are responsible these forests of creating great uh, river skies that also result in, in rains that fertilize uh, the soil. Waste has also a great destructive impact on nature, short term and long term. You only need to think about plastic and electronic garbage. They are produced with raw material and energetic resources and then the sale of those products and then the consumption, complete or partial consumption of those products. And it goes beyond material and spiritual uh, needs of the human. Capitalism in this sense is a waste economy. It, it is orientated to uh, unnecessary um, consumption. It, boosts um, energetic consumption and the production of greenhouse gases. It is exploiting nature more than it is necessary. The destruction of nature, and I want to repeat that, many times unnecessary, it's implemented irrationally by capitalism in these last uh, centuries in order to sustain its uh, production methods and consumption circulation. And they, in, in this, the Industrial Revolution was one of the great conquests of, of humanity. There are thousands of cities, lots of roads, railroads, e-route roads, camps, eolic um, countrysides, solar panels, nuclear plants, thermoelectric centrals, military installations, thousands of satellites which are active or inactive, thousands or a million of hectares for agriculture, mining and exploitation, etc. Those are artificial systems, which as a network are superimposed in already existing ecosystems, deteriorating them or destroying them like a cancer that grows each day. This conflict was never regulated. There was never any effort to look for a balance that would be that would cost too much and would affect the profit levels. The cities are a great social, cultural, and technolo technological conquest, a great motor uh, power that has been extended with capitalism. In 1800, during uh, the Industrial Revolution, the population was quite diminished, and most uh, only 50 cities had more than 50,000 inhabitants. Then a few years after that, 54% of the population lived in cities, some of them with more than 34 million people, inhabitants. In 2013, cities were multiplied. We expect 2050, uh, for urban population to reach 70%. It is an unequal, uh, urbanization is unequal regarding territories. And they altered the movement of aquatic currents, they dry out wetlands, they produce tons of waste, they alter the uh, uh, characteristics of the soil, they consume great amounts of energies and natural resources, sometimes 80 times more than the region is able to produce. 
they are transformed in heat islands because of more than 1,400 million uh, cars, lights, electric or gas stoves, the industries, malls, everything. Those are lights that are visible from space and that's quite polluting, especially for animals. Great buildings, asphalt, they absorb uh, solar radiation do, and do not reflect it. They maintain heat. Cities and their infrastructure are great producers of greenhouse gases that besides uh, they are responsible of global warming. According to the OMS, there are many million people who live each year, resulting in um, environmental pollution. And that is what we are uh, going to keep on seeing if this is the same system, capitalist and depredative system enforced. We need to rebuild our uh, relationship with nature for it to be harmonic. There's something similar that happens with the transportation and communication networks that uh, support and sustain this capitalist system that allow uh, products and materials to be transported. They ensure the mobilization of the populations to be able to go to work, tourism, change of residence. They allow us to be a great organism, a social organism of a great cultural and economic scope. It is like a spider web similar to hot knives that uh, heat up the environment. They destroy the natural environments of animals. They pollute and generate heat. Many of those routes are unnecessary. And almost all of them could be built in a different way. There's something similar with um, sea roads in the migration process of many species. All the adults, uh, electric networks, thousands of um, planes are flying right now, most of them unnecessary flights, and they affect the uh, migration of birds, especially. We know that global warming is produced by the uh, rise in production of greenhouse gases, in which 33% are responsible, uh, uh, the, I mean, result from the car industry and transportation industry and fossil fuels like natural gas and coal. Agriculture and cattle produce 31% uh, of those gases. At the same time, we have the planet desertification and that reduces the um, capacity to produce oxygen. Capitalism has turned uh, humanity to a great energy eating species. Energy is, is a product and the demand will grow with electric cars. The consumption of energy is also quite unequal and unnecessary, even though there are uh, millions of people who light uh, their houses up with candles. In the United States, one inhabitant consumes 30 times more energy than one of the Philippines. However, 
the greater producers of greenhouse gases are the most developed countries, most, most of them in the North Hemisphere. But the catastrophic consequences of this climate alteration are suffered by all of the inhabitants of this planet in an unequal way too. In conclusion, capitalism has given us prosperity, but not for all. And it has given us also the climate crisis, and that is suffered by everyone, but unequally. That's how Karl Marx described it. He said, then capitalist production only develops the technique and the combination of the process of social production. Plundering at the same time, the two original sources of all is enrichment, the land and the workers. I would say nature and, and the work. It is said that all humans are responsible for the environmental crisis. That's not true. The one liable for this is energy, inequality, and reasonable economic uh, model that functions on the base of the individual profit, which only purpose is to value each of those capitals. That means getting profit to be able to repeat the production process in a wider way each time but they cannot do it anymore. They won't be able to take the measures necessary because that would not make the production um, scale uh, cheaper. If they did so, capitalism would fall. If the interests of humanity are above the interests of the capital, climate alterations will be uh, more intense each time. We need our cities. We need our transportation systems. We need technology. But also, we need a stable climate, soil and water to survive. So at a global level, we need a new balance between the man's technological systems and the systems of nature. That is a balance that cannot be uh, reached partially. To solve this crisis, we need a, a supportive and united economy, which is submitted to economic plans and centralized and democratic plans, which is centralized and looks for the protection of climate and the environment, organized and decided and controlled by the workers who are the ones who protect the material and spiritual uh, richness of our society. That would be all. That's it. Thank you, Fernando. I will stop sharing. Okay, so Doña Chica Ramirez was able to talk to us through another phone, and there's a huge storm coming in the region, and that's why they cannot. Um, be here with us, but we will ask Ariana Maguire from Nicaragua from the, to make some comments and observation of this uh, struggle, the anti-canal struggle, so that we can finish the exposition uh, stage of this panel. Ariana, are you there? Yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. 
you can go ahead. Okay, it's uh, really sad not to be able to get uh, Chica Ramirez here with us. She leads the peace and movements and she's a reference of the human and environmental rights, not only in Nicaragua, but in the Central American region. As you know, in Nicaragua today, we had a government that's a dictatorship, it's a Stalinist, it's capitalist, uh, by Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo since 2007, and they have boost uh, concession uh, policy to great industries which practice extractivism and destruction of different ecosystems in order to extract raw materials, plundering communities that live there. This kind of orientation has been incrementing its territorial invasion. In 2013, there was uh, the approval Uh, by a decree and in compliance with the assembly, with the Frente Sandinista, they approved by decree a concession law for the canal. This concession law established the construction, the building of a great interoceanic uh, canal similar to the one in, in Panama. This promise that has been a historical dream for different governments has been reflected in this uh, concession orientation with a Chinese uh, company, which was not the Chinese government, but a company called HKNV, and they, they signed this um, agreement for 15 for 50 years that could be extended to 100 years for that uh, plan in Cosibolta Lake, which is the main freshwater reservoir in Central America. This law established a route of 278 kilometers of which 105 kilometers would directly go through that lake. And that was quite an outrageous law because there was no uh, environmental impact study that would ensure uh, information about the destruction, uh, the information about the destruction of that lake. That did not happen. So regarding this issue, that the interoceanic canal would imply that's not the uh, not very deep it's deep as 15 um, kilometers so that huge boats can go by those that uh, transport materials so it was funded uh, the movement anti-canal movement was funded in, the, in that moment, in 2013. It began to consolidate itself as one of the most um, confrontative social movements for the for natural, uh, for environmental rights. So this movement, this anti-canal peace movement started to carry out um, strikes and mobilizations, and in two years, they made more than 100 strikes and mobilizations. They were brutally repressed systematically, permanently, by armed forces in Nicaragua. The national um, police and also the national armed forces, both of them repressing the peasant sectors who were defending their houses, their labor and their ancestral land. So that was how the project was a promise, but was not 
able to be executed more than a, just a little few advances. And most of the territories that were uh, this destined to um, agricultural projects or airports, other um, hydroelectric projects in the region. So in 2018, there's a rebellion against all measures introduced by the IMF and against repression to protests. The peace and movements starts to also be at the vanguard of social movements in opposition to the dictatorship. And that's when the government intensifies in the rural area, the systematic policy that it has um, keep on intensifying the last years of prosecution, repression, disappearances, violence towards uh, political leaders in that territory. So this uh, repressive policy has been historically uh, sustained. And it is necessary for the agricultural frontier to be wider. For the meat industry, mining industries, mining extractivism that pollutes the main uh, water sources of the territory and also produces uh, awful working conditions for miners that constantly uh, get trapped in those mines because there's no uh, appropriate structure to work in that field and also waits a great amount of, of water. So all of these policies and measures of surrender today are um, surpass the other surrender uh, measures that were taken in previous governments, more than neoliberal governments in the 90s or 2000, Ortega has given away the uh, greater amount of concessions to companies, to corporations. So besides this promise of the canal law, and I'm explaining that precisely to for all of you to understand what is the role of the fight against uh, dictatorship in the region, there are other measures of surrender from Ortega Murillo's government. One of the main enemies of the environmental rights and also community rights that inhabit those regions. So at last, I would like to remind um, everyone of the support of the peasant um, organizations and sectors like Francisca Chica Ramirez, who is organizing settlements in Costa Rica, a few miles away from the frontier with Nicaragua. And they were since from that settlement, they were part of the They were part of the caravan that we organized in the International Commission that traveled with um, legislators and left uh, parties representatives in the International Socialist League in, in which the best sectors, uh, later sectors of the vanguard and were part of it. And also the um, sectors, the peasant sectors led by Francisca Chica Ramirez took part in it to denounce Ortega and his Stalinist and capitalist um, dictatorship nature. So I think that we can present a dossier of what has been the environmental um, struggle in Central America and Nicaragua 
so that you have a material um, about these struggles and that we should think we can propose to make a forum uh, soon to speak specifically about what happens regarding um, the environment in the Central American region. So if there are people from Central America that are listening right now who are getting to know us, I will leave our social media information in the chat so that you can know more about us and if you want to contact us. From here, we do appreciate and hug and greet all of our comrades from this International Socialist League that are here today. And we will keep on struggling. Greetings, comrades. OK, thank you, Ariana from Anti-Capitalist Alternative. We would like to go forward with the questions. We will make questions uh, for Ligia and Fernando. And so that when you answer, you can also make um, any final observation or thoughts so that we can close this forum. First of all, for Ligia, the question is, which is the situation of indigenous reservoirs? Are you there, Ligia? Okay. I'm here. Okay, so in Panama, there are some reservoirs that have been acknowledged, acknowledged um, as indigenous as it is their right and it is a duty of the Panama government. We have many indigenous cultures one of them is in the Darien region, and there's also the Kuna culture. And there's also the culture of Nabe Bugle, which is in Chiriqui. But I will talk particularly uh, to those I have mentioned. The Comanca culture in, in Iberay Guman, it's badly affected uh, it's a little bit hard to say this uh for a journalist but it is vox populi that this is known at a national level many leaders of the indigenous sectors have been corrupted they have learned quickly um the corruption and mixed race, like they call Latino, and they have made great uh, forest concessions for timber extraction, especially in the Comarque. They have made a concession that was signed in 2005 of 25,000 forest hectares uh, for 25 years. So each year, 1,000 hectares would be extracted. But it is not the kind of extraction that is uh, written, written in the environmental impact study. It is an unreasonable extraction. There are polluted water, diseases in children and the elderly. Even the, the rivers uh, that were used as uh, roads for agriculture, those rivers are all, almost um, un, 
unusable. Canoas can not uh, even go through those rivers. This happens in that comark I mentioned, and now in the other one, there was a situation of a concession to sell timber of the most novel species, a strong and hard, um, hard uh, timber, like caoba and other three species, species that are now extinct. There's also the pollution of rivers because mules go through big trucks. They do not change their um, fuel, so uh, they pollute the water of those rivers. Under those concessions, they also take advantage to uh, extract timber illegally. Another situation in Navebuglé, Comar, in Chiriqui province, is the situation of rivers being used for hydroelectric plants. So that situation means that there are dams and that communities are affected and that um, also aquatic species are affected. That means that the state gave the indigenous sectors what uh, was theirs, but they were not thought about the richness and value of those lands. So they don't know how to manage them. So then comarks, which are very rich for the biodiversity and with climate change, and they contain carbon dioxide, they weren't taught how to use them. And the millionaires uh, and transnational enterprises and companies uh, want to take it away from them. That would be a summary. Thank you, Ligia. Do you want to make any uh, final observation? Yes, sure. First of all, I would like to thank you. Uh, thanks to the International Socialist League for these um, invitations. We are able to uh, shine some light on the uh, struggles we're going through in Panama and that this happens in many, many other countries of the world. Our planet is um, dying. Uh, it is impacted deeply. Those of us who have to um, act to proceed, the, the, the ones at the bottom, ecologism of poor people. We need the positive aspects of social media like this uh, global forum to promote further consciousness and create alliance among each other to create real changes. Capitalism is killing the planet in a more accelerated way each time. So I want to greet you all, all the, uh, advocates of human and environmental rights and all people who have participated in this forum. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ligia, Ligia for your contribution. And in order to advance and close this panel, we are going to ask Fernando to answer. There are two or three questions, but they can become seen questions from Paraguay where comrades are, are watching the forum. One of the questions is which measures would be necessary for, decentralized, for the decentralization of those populations who contain the uh, most part of the uh, pollution? And the second question is the socialist proposal as an alternative will be poly classist or would be, as Marx uh, said, a government of the workers. If you could please um, explain programmatically a little bit more what is the exit and the program that revolutionaries uh, propose. Okay, then. That's the key question. That exceptionally, that's the key question. Who can save us? Where's the solution? 
I once again will talk about an idea. We, we say uh, capitalism is, is to be liable, but what is capitalism? It's uh, millions of companies of capitalists, private, that they make decisions, independent decisions, and, and are imposed autocratically to workers to produce certain product or service to obtain profits. That's capitalism. And what has capitalism done? It has been able to develop technology and it has turned those workers in a social force and a spectacular, really powerful, with which it was able to build the civilization we see today, that it is at the service of creating profits. And it can do that because it has the autocratic control of each of its companies. My point is um, the following. If this has been this way, and all these disasters have resulted um, from that dynamic, because capitalism works that way, how can we solve it? That was Marx's biggest discovery. See what capitalism has done. It has organized in collective units, millions of collective units all along the world of workers and has articulated them through world uh, market, socializing them, creating a social force of product productive social force of great uh, strength. It is thanks to them that this uh, civilization is um, possible. Everything that exists is done and also destructive. See the contradiction? The workers being turned into the killers of humanity for the control that capitalism um, imposes on them. So how can we solve that? The solution is easy, it's simple. If, worker, if workers can uh, turn that dominion dynamic around, if they are able to be auto-determined and determine themselves, to be able to coordinate at a global level, and coordinate conscious, uh, consciously, and they count with the, um, they have the, the technology and social organization that ensures that they can uh, move forward with the task that, that they have, which are enormous, huge tasks. Because we need to also ensure the welfare of humanity. There are great calamities in the planet. We have uh, great tasks like the ones of the cities. There's no territorial, rational territorial plan for cities to be built, only for market circumstances, wars, and other economic criteria that result uh, in a city being more developed than other ones. That's why there's so much concentration of uh, inhabitants in one place and not in another. That um, irrationality has to be transformed by workers. Planning, there's no other way. If the process has been irrational, then it, it has to be centralized and planned. If anyone has any other idea, please tell me. There's no other option. That's why Marx says capitalism has given us the chance of socialism. Because if there's a partial articulation of, of workers, it should be rational, it should be Uh, those workers should be organized but for society's welfare, nature, and its protection. Polyclassism, um, it's 
the vultures, the Vusha sectors, even if they would want to, they wouldn't be able to. For example, let's suspend the oil extraction. And everyone said, yes, sure, energy and extractivism, they're awful things. But then they spoke about, well, oil is a great business. See Ukraine war. Uh, now, oil is a great business. That's how uh, capitalism works. It, it does not depend on the good will of one person or another. It has its own dynamic. And if we don't break that, the axis of that dynamic, which is the private property of the uh, productive forces, then we will, there will be nothing to be done, only patches. That does not mean we cannot fight for a particular pro problem in one region or another, but we have to know that if we do not do it internationally, then there's nothing. Marx is around the corner. I don't know if I can say anything else or, or if that answered your questions. Okay, Fernando, thank you so much. Any final thoughts? Well, essentially, uh, that this is a global matter, an international matter that if we need to develop any activity, it is really important. For example, the um, African comrades, he talks about the, the north industrial, industrialized north and that the south is not liable for the destruction of nature or maybe in a small um, amount, but the ones who are liable for that are in um, United States, China, Europe, those great powers who lead the destruction of this planet. That means that the change has to be there. Of course, articulated with uh, those at the bottom, um, it is known that everything begins at the bottom. The chains uh, break in the, in the most weakened parts of it. Those are the poorer sectors. It is possible for the chains to be broken in that part. For example, uh, Russian revolution. And Lenin said, this is global revolution. Why? Because this chain is really tensioned and the weaker, weakest part of the chain broke first. Possibly, uh, possibly the bottom countries will be the weakest part of the chain. But it doesn't matter where it begins. It is a global revolution. That would be it. Thank you, Fernando. With this, we finished the last panel. Now, Alejandro. This has been a great debate. I will first of all like to thank all participants through our six panels. It has allowed us to have an international perspective of this um, issue that is deeper each time and then gives us the opportunity and the need of keep organizing to fight against this reality. As it has been said before, the issue is not the climate, it is the system that's leading us to destruction, destruction of nature and destru destruction of life on earth. We need to avoid that in the only possible way that's organizing, struggling for a strategic way out. As many of you have said, there's no, there's no planet B, this is the only planet that we have. So we have to organize and we have to fight and struggle for a dignified life. And not only for a little group of capitalists can destroy it. So this has been our contribution from the uh, International Socialist League. This won't 
be the last forum. Uh, we will uh, make further ones with uh, other particular issues, especially the young sectors and activist sectors uh, from unions. That uh, this you have to take this flag that is environmental um, issues because it's linked, uh, closely linked to the social struggles. We have to unify our struggles to be able to change this. To change this reality, we need strength. Organized revolutionary strength. This struggle is not national, it's international, and it is a struggle that needs a lot of revolutionary organization. So we invite you all, all of you who have uh, participated today, to uh, follow us in social media, to speak with us, to send us emails, for us to be able to send you information and to organize together for this fight. So to end, I would like to thank everyone who has contributed, uh, who has worked in, in this uh, forum, the translators. We have translated this forum to many languages, all of them militants, members of organizations. There are many other comrades who uh, have worked in this forum that you cannot see uh, that made this possible. And Many other comrades in other countries uh, waking up really early or staying up really late uh, because that's the nature of a global forum uh, many, many time zones, so I, as I've said before. So I would like to thank you deeply for that effort and let's keep in touch and let's keep helping and supporting each of our struggles. We are making our own campaign in support of Pakistani comrades who are facing a great task. We want to give them real support for those who have lost everything. So we want to do this campaign of $5, five euros contributions. Uh, if all of us can make a contribution, we will send a huge um, help, helping hand to our comrades. Uh, not only members, but people who are not members can reach anyone you know of the organization. We have made, made many campaigns for Ukraine, for Ukraine workers, for the Lebanon, international solidarity uh, also means making these kinds of campaigns. So let's keep on struggling and fighting and organizing because there is a way out. And that way out is destroying this capitalist system and in the rigs of this system to build another uh, system, a completely different one in which we can democratically plan what we want to do with nature and how to make all of our activities sustainable so that we have a world that we can enjoy today and for future generations to enjoy tomorrow. Thank you all comrades who have participated and we will keep on touch.